let's say hello to one of my favorites in the business. We go from one of my other favorites to the man himself, King Molawal, who announced his retirement seven days ago today. And I said to myself, all right, I know it's seven days, but we've got to have mom. And this is how big of a deal this is. King Mo, I do believe, has never done my show via Skype. He refuses. I said, King Mo, you retire. You come on via Skype. So thank you for doing it because I know you didn't want to. Man, it's all good. You know, I got you. My man, King Mo. Well, congratulations on a great career, Mo. Why did you retire now? Man, um, too many injuries. I can't train the way I want to. You know, and, uh, you know, I just, I don't know. I just couldn't, my, my body wasn't recovering. I just, I just couldn't do it no more, man. And then on top of that, I was, I got the feeling like, um, I saw Roy McDonald do an interview after a fight stating how he felt like he didn't want to hurt nobody. And I'm like, damn, I feel the same way. Oh, like, it's weird because man, when I was younger, I was like, man, I'm going to smash this dude. I'm going to hurt him. And then like recently I'm like, you know what? If I can just beat him up and just stop him or stop him, but I don't want to hurt nobody. It got to the point where I just didn't want to hurt nobody. That and my body's beat up and I just I'm just old man. Wow. I just want to relax. So when Rory said that, it really spoke to you. Yeah. It spoke to me, man. I'm I'm hoping Rory, I'm hoping Rory just had a bad day because I think he's a great fighter. And I know he's very young in the sport. But I'm hoping he's had a bad day and he's not feeling that way. Because that's how I feel. Wow. How long have you been feeling that way for? Uh, about a year and a half. Wow. So you fought multiple times feeling that way. Yeah, just it's weird, man. I'm like, man, I wanna I don't wanna I wanna leave hurt nobody, I wanna harm no like you know, injure nobody. It it because uh really I was so I was so injured in practice, I was just worried about I was worried about myself getting injured. So I was like, man, you know what, I gotta be smart for myself. And then I started worried about myself getting injured so much that I was worried about injuring other people as well. So it just got to the point where I was like, you know what? I don't really know if I feel like harming people no more, man. I'm just trying to chill, man, relax, <laughs> teach. And that's about it. When you start to feel that way, you've been competing for so long, first in wrestling, now now in MMA. Does that kind of play tricks on your mind? You're like, whoa, what are these feelings? You know, that this is just a complete shift from how I used to feel. Yeah, man. I think when when you feel like that, time to step out of the game because, you know, you're stepping into the cage or the ring or, or the field or whatever you're doing with somebody that wants to harm you, that wants to knock you out, that wants to break your bones or whatever. You shouldn't be going to the cage or the ring or on the field thinking that you're just going to beat somebody and not harm them as well. Um, the moment that the moment that you start feeling like that is the moment you should step out of the game. And I started having them thoughts as well as injuries and my body not healing and coming back as fast. And now I'm like, I've been losing weight, man. Just it's a bit of stuff, man. I'm getting old. Okay. I'm old, man. How old are you? 38. 38? Man, you're young. You're 38 but, years young. But I've had over, I probably had over 40 surgeries. 40? That's the difference. 40? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. When was the last one? Yeah. The last one was my minor hip replacement. When did you have that? Two years ago, I didn't tell nobody, but it was a. I had a Birmingham hip surgery. So right now, I got metal all in my hip after the Quentin Jackson fight. I went to LA and had this procedure done. I'm the first combat athlete to come back at a high level, I guess, with this with this procedure done. So now I have metal, titanium metal steel, all in my right hip. So you have actually fought with this a couple times. Yeah, about three times with it. Damn, and and so how did like do you feel different? Yeah, I feel different. Like, it's weird because if I go any place where it's like 70 or lower, I can feel the metal in my hip. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Like, when I move, sometimes when I'm running or if I move, I can, I can feel clanking. I hear, I hear clanking. Metal hit each other in my hip. Is that just due to wear and tear? Well, it's just the surgery. No, the, no, no. The, I mean, like, the, the, why did you have the surgery? Oh, for wear and tear, man. Okay. I was bone on bone. I, like when I fought Quentin Jackson, um, the second time, I had two cortisone shots in a week span, and it didn't do nothing. And then afterwards, you had to have it. Yeah, because afterwards, I went to WrestleMania in in uh, Orlando, and it was a great time. But I could I could barely walk. I was struggling to get around. So that's when I knew I was like, man, I gotta get the surgery done. Or I'm gonna retire. 
And when I got the surgery done, I felt good, but I could feel the metal. I, it, it's weird. I could feel metal on my hip, man, when I move. It's weird, but you know what? It's better than what I had before. So your last fight was in late April for Ryzen. Um, when you left that yeah. night, did you know that was it for you? Uh, you know what? Yeah, maybe. I was, I, was, I was up in the air, but I was like, you know what? That might be it because, you know, I can't jog. You know, I can't, I can't really, I can't do sprint. I can't jump. A lot, a lot of my athletic ability I had went away after the knee surgery, and the hip surgeries, and the stab infection. So, I it's just a lot of stuff that you know started to uh, start adding up, man. And I can't train the way I want to no more. So it's it's a lot of things, man. So I just feel like you know it's time for me to step, step away from the game. Okay, and and you leave with regrets? No, man. You know, I. Nah, you know, the fight game is a fight game, man. You know, if, if we all have regrets and we all, you know, but at the same time, like, I really don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like my, my my time is over with. Now it's just time for me to help others get farther than where I got. Do you regret the fact that you never got to fight in the UFC? Nah, because my main goal, in the, you you get all my interviews, I always said my main goal is to go out there, have fun, be a champion, and get paid. I never was never stuck on no UFC, no strike force. I just want to come and just have a good time and, and get paid and have fun, man. And I want to give a shout, quick shout out to the Raw team because the Raw team, Rico Chipparelli, Frank Trigg, Dan Henderson, um, Vladimir Matashenko, um, Randy Couture, Matt Lillman, those are the guys I looked up to, the Hammer House. Them two teams kind of, kind of maybe more interested in, in the, jumping in the NHB at the time, no holds barred. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to them because they don't get enough respect. They don't get talked about enough because they were the first true wave of world-class wrestlers that stepped foot into the cage. Right. Amen to that, 100%. Um, but So you mentioned you don't have that same desire to hurt someone, but it sounds like you're going to stay in the sport, involved in the sport as a coach, and you're essentially teaching other people how to hurt other people. So how do you, how do you juggle that? Well, look, it's cool. Look, I can teach you how to harm somebody. And if you do it, I'm cool. But it's just me. I, I'm not cool with doing it myself. I'm not, I'm not about to hurt nobody. I think all the fighting me is gone. All the competition, like all the wrestling, all the harm. It's, it's not in me no more. I'm like, I'm just chilling now, man. You know, that's about it. Chilling, watching film, watching these fights, and I'm, I'm I want to see what the, the what the future can do with the American Top Team. I want to see the youth of American Top Team, come, you know, take 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 this um take this MMA game to a whole different level. So you're that's you're, what I want to see. You're going to remain as a coach at ATT in, in in South Florida. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh wow, you're going to be a phenomenal coach. You're one of the smartest guys I've ever met in this sport. I think this is perfect for you. Uh, thanks. I, but right now, I'm behind the, a few geniuses. We had, we had Coach Conan. Yeah. Um, and Dean, Dean, man, people, Mike Brown, Dean, Steve Mako. We have a, we have a highly, I think we have the best coaching staff in MMA, and at the same time, I feel like we're underrated. I agree. I couldn't agree more. I think Mike Brown has turned into one of the best coaches in the game. Uh, the other guys that you mentioned, Dean Thomas, Steve Mako is phenomenal. I saw him, uh, a picture with him and uh, Dustin Poirier recently. That's that's huge for Dustin to have Mako by his side. You as well now in the mix. It's incredible. Um, and so have you already started working with anyone there? Any young guys, any young females, anyone that you're really excited about? Have you already started to forge those relationships? Coach, student? I've been forging them like, for over the past two years. Um, okay. I have fighters I work with. I just don't re reveal the names. Some are high level, some are low level. I just don't because when it comes down to it, as a coach with me, it's more about the fighters. So like, like if anything, if the fighters mention that Mo's working with them or I'm working with them, that's cool. But for me, for the most part, I'm not gonna mention any names unless the fighters mention my name first. Okay. I mean, that's how I leave it like that. And will this I be respect. your full time job? Uh, for right now, yeah. You know, I I enjoy being at the gym. I enjoy watching these. These guys work. So right now, my full-time job is coach the American top team. Okay. I love it. You look back at your career, so many great moments. There's there's one that comes to mind for me, but I'm wondering for you, is there is there one moment that sticks out, your favorite moment, the happiest that you ever were? Not happiest, but I'll tell you this, man. Like 
One moment, Ariel. Okay. After I win the belt. Yeah. After I won the belt, we talked. Like, I'm not gonna lie, when I won the belt, it was bittersweet because even though I won it, I really didn't care. Like my main my main dream was to win the Olympics, man. And and, and when I think about that, that, that makes me sad because I came up short in that. That was my main, that was my biggest dream, be an Olympic champion. And I became a world champion in MMA, but I felt like I I, I wanted more in uh, amateur wrestling. You're talking about the moment in Nashville after you beat Gegard Mousasi, correct? And you were lying down. I can't believe yeah. that you're saying that that's your favorite yeah. moment. That's one of my moments, yeah, because that, because that, because because that, that's when I, that's when I realized really, like, MMA is just it's it's short term make believe in a sense. It's not your real life. It, it, it's it's what you do to 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 push yourself and to to challenge yourself. But but when it's all said and done, it's all said and done. It's not your real life. It's just fantasy. So that might be my favorite post-fight interview ever. Uh, I, I wish I showed the clip here. I, 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 posted, I posted the clip a couple weeks ago. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, you were lying down, and you were very emotional. Casey and I were in the back in, in Nashville. I'll never forget that because we didn't often get to go in the back to interview the fighters right after, and you could tell how much the moment meant to you, and you said that you were always second place and you never got that big one. I'll never forget that for as long as I live. I, I'm, I'm so grateful that you let us have that moment and let us be a part of that. So I'm, I'm kind of blown away that you even remember it, to be honest. Yeah, I remember a lot. Of, man, Ariel, remember, 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 remember uh, in uh, Ohio? I said, Errol Hamani ain't here since so they real, they a, a, a real uh, press conference. Because it's true, man. I, 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 I feel like right now, I like the way MMA, MMA media is gone. Because I feel like, I, I just feel like right now it seems stronger. Stronger than ever. I, and I like what's going on with MMA media. I, I like it. I, I feel like there's more knowledge in it as well, too. So, I don't know. The way things are going, I like, I like the way things are going right now for the MMA media. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's looking sharp. Great. I'm glad to hear that. Are you still watching wrestling these days? Man, you are AEW. That's you see John Moxley. I saw. John. Did you see John Moxley? Come on, man. I love look AEW. I don't know, watch WWE no more. Granted, they have great athletes, but Ring of Honor, Impact, and AEW is where it's at. What about New Japan? New Japan, yeah, but I, I can say New Japan, Ring of Honor. Okay. They're all in the same. Yeah, they all work together. You know, AAA, they're all in the same same mix. You you actually watch Impact? For real? Well, you know, I watch some of the matches. You know, I know people are in it. You know, like Billy Mack. You know what I'm saying? I, I tune in to watch some matches. You know what I'm saying? But okay. I, I really don't, I, it's hard to catch it. You know what I'm saying? I just watch some matches on, on, on YouTube. How do you think your boy Kane is going to do in AAA? I wonder, I wonder who, 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 where Kane went to wrestling school at. I think he'll be all right though, because Kane listens. Yeah. I, I, if, he had, if he had, if he had, if he had a good um, coach to, to show him the ropes and show him how the, the rules, the regulations, and stuff, he'll be all right, man. You see what Ronda did. Ronda's, Ronda's doing get doing the thing. Um, uh, uh, Matt Riddle's doing the thing. Uh, Shayna Baszler. You see the four horsewomen. I feel like um, now's the time for a lot of MMA fighters. And, to jump into um, pro wrestling and, and do something. Cyborg was at the AEW show. Did you see that? Yeah, I seen Cy I seen Cyborg tweeting the AEW. I, I'm, if, if I were AEW, they can go ahead and put Cyborg with Austin Kong and have a tag team. Oh yeah. Ain't nobody beat them too. <laughs> that is so. When I asked you about maybe some regrets, like, are you regretful over the fact that the the, the wrestling career didn't work out for you? Uh, well, you know what. Um, I still do. Uh, I still do independent shows. I got a match in two weeks. Um, Blueprint Wrestling. Really? I still do booking. Yeah, I do. I do. I do matches. You know, shout out to CCW. I've been um, I, but Pablo out there, out there at Fort Lauderdale, I'm going to his, uh, his school to get my get my feet again, cleaning up and stuff. Yeah, but I'm I'm gonna um, my goal is to be a jobber, <laughs> at least once or twice in AEW. Really? I, 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 like, I'll take a super kick. Yeah, I'll take a super kick. You know, Hangman Page while I close on me. Hey, whatever, man. Hey, AEW, if you're watching, I'll be the black Brooklyn Brawler. Oh, that's amazing. That? That's amazing. Yeah, yeah I was going to say Brooklyn Brawler, Iron Mike Sharp, yeah, yeah. Barry Horowitz, like one of those jobbers, or, but or, the ones that come up from Cat time Weasel, to time. Cat Weasel from England, Cat Weasel. You know, yes. Like Cat Weasel type thing. Yeah. Rip Rogers. Shout out to Rip Rogers, too. My old wrestling coach, Rip Rogers. 
out there at the OBW. Shout out to OBW. Oh my gosh, this uh, could you? But I feel like you're too famous to be that guy. Like, like it's too big of a deal for you to show up. You're not just some random schmo. Like, no, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? I make things. I change it up. Oh, as a matter of fact, there's a new wrestler I want you to watch. Okay. Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy. Okay. Keep him. Love him. It's a different style. It's a different style of wrestling. Okay. But it's pretty. It's, it's, he can work. It's pretty funny. Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy. Now, are you, so you're, you're watching. You're watching more wrestling than MMA these days. I feel like. Uh yeah yeah I watch both I watch I watch them all. Okay. Even a, MMA, pro wrestling, boxing. I'm watching it all. Yeah, my guy Andy Ruiz. You saw that, right? Yeah, I watched Andrew. It's crazy. Andrew Ruiz, I covered him years ago when he fought um, Elijah McCall, Alvin McCall McCall's son. Oh. I watched him um, at the New Orleans um, a top rank card. I watched him. And I'm like, this guy is special. And I watched him beat Joe Hanks the next fight. And I thought he, I thought he beat Joseph Parker in New Zealand. And I thought this fight with Anthony Joshua was tough because Anthony Joshua doesn't move his feet enough. To beat Andrew Ruiz, you, got to, you have to move your feet. Like, you'd be like Tyson Fury. Because mm. Andrew Ruiz... I think he, he, him, Canelo, and Joseph Benavidez, all Mexican, those are the best combinations in boxing right now. And you're seeing that. Wait, Joseph Benavidez? Three, I mean, David Benavidez. Yeah. David Benavidez. <laughs> I was like, wait, one of these guys is not like the other. Shout out, shout out to Joseph Benavidez. Right. Too. David, <laughs> David Benavidez. He has some hands. He will need to watch him. Mo, you're the man. I could talk fighting with you all day, but unfortunately, we're out of time. I really appreciate you doing this, Mo, especially doing it on Skype. Because uh, for some, why are you so camera shy? You never like to do it on Skype. I don't know. I just like you know. I don't, I don't know. I just it's it's fast. Just call, call, and then hang up. That's it. You did you actually download Skype just for us? I downloaded Skype. Yeah, wow. I downloaded Skype like last night. Yeah. This is one of the great honors of my life right here. That King Mo yeah. actually downloaded Skype just for us. That's amazing. I gotta say, man, when you came out back in the day, Sengoku you know, with the, the umbrella and the girls and all that stuff. Like, you brought showmanship to this game. You brought fun to this game. I remember Team Thirsty, GDP, yeah. all that stuff and more. The the crown. I mean, look at Cejudo. Cejudo's doing what you were doing 10 years ago, my man. You were doing that exact yeah. same thing. He's taking a, a page out of your playbook. And so I hope the game remembers you and treats you well and that you can impart some of that knowledge, what you did in the cage, but also what you did out of the cage to get people to care about you to some of these new fighters that you're working with at ATT, the younger fighters. Um, and you were always so good to me. I'll never forget when you said that. I was like, I was working for Fox for one week when you said that, and they were all like, this fighter just said something about you at the press conference. You made me seem like the coolest guy in the world. And I'll never forget that. So thank you, Mo. Thank you, you for everything. Too, cool thank you for everything, Probably. my man. Congratulations on a great career, a great run. You have nothing to be uh, you know, regretful about. You've had an amazing run. And I hope that you have a great career as a coach. I have no doubt you'll... And, and you should be a media guy as well. You, you, you've always been that good. So I hope you get to do more of this stuff as well, too. I hope I get a chance, man. Thanks.